love your neighbor as yourself. In the span of just a few weeks, the end of the year entering into the first weekend of January is the heart of what we do as a youth commission. During 2019 into 2020, we led two retreats at Camp Michael. The theme, where's the love? We spoke of different kinds of love shown throughout the Bible, such as agape, God's love, and philios, friendship love. We learned that love can be found in the most unusual places. In February, Happening took place at Camp Michael with the theme, Life in You. The song of the weekend was Beautiful Things, reminding us that God makes beautiful things out of us and out of dust. God worked through every single youth and youth leader there and left us with that on top of the mountain, faith high, that kept us coming back. In March, things changed. As the pandemic grew, school and church communities went online. We lost an in-person new beginnings, a middle school retreat led by high schoolers. This retreat at Camp Michael gathered over 150 youth and youth leaders. Here's to Carter to talk about what happened next. I remember the new beginnings training earlier this year. There were gonna be some changes due to COVID-19, but I was thankful that we would be together in person. Then a week went by and it was canceled. I was crushed. All of the costumes I had gathered for skits just sat on my bed. I couldn't use them anymore. Of course, I understood that canceling the in-person New Beginnings was important, but it was still hard. Thankfully, we took the weekend to social media and it was good for people. However, this fall we faced the same problem. New Beginnings could not be held in person. This time, the New Beginnings team was prepared. We planned fun skits, talks, and sent care packages to participants. We adapted and worshiped God in a new way and it brought us all joy. By April, we were adjusting as a commission by offering Compline Zoom nights with prayer, music, program, and small groups. This quickly became a weekly event with the first one having over 150 people in attendance. This is what filled our cups at the beginning of the pandemic and we continue to gather for these check-ins today. Here's Julia to tell you how these online gatherings impact her faith. Before COVID, I had just started getting more involved in the church by attending services and youth group, and I had just attended Happening. Not being able to do these things was hard for me, but having Zoom nights gave me and others a way to feel connected with the youth community of the Episcopal Church. It helped us feel less isolated during this stressful time and created a space for us to share what was going on in our lives in the world. As racial injustice took center stage, these online spaces gave us a chance to be brave and share what we were experiencing and discuss what we could do as a community of faith. I participated in the Dismantling Racism Youth Curriculum as combined group with St. Catharines and St. And St. David's. We watched the videos, had discussions, and began to unpack the history and learn ways we could take action in our lives. As we continue to move forward as young people in church th during multiple pandemics, it became clear that many of us were stepping up in big ways in church leadership. We have Bailey here to talk to us about what that has meant for her. I believe I am the most faithful version of myself when I am around people in my church and diocesan community. Not being able to see any of these people I usually see had weakened my connection with God. During this time, however, I was on vestry for my church at St. Patrick's and was able to help with its online gatherings, which took an undeniable amount of perseverance. I sang and recorded camp songs and encouraged other disconnected youth to join in. I was often thinking to myself, what's the point of planning services and Zoom activities if we can't be together? The point is by stepping up to serve, I helped people in my church feel connected to each other and to the spirit in new ways. I found that serving compassionately on a small scale made a large difference to members of my congregation. Helping my church community, in turn, helped me too. I began to see God through others despite being on a screen, and my faith has since been strengthened by reconnecting with God's people. Love your neighbor as yourself. As the year progressed, the reality of just how long we might be away from one another set in. We were heartbroken. We know that this combined with the postponing dice and youth events until further notice. This combined with the pressure of school and the upcoming election brought even more stress into our lives. Here is Libby to share some of what that has looked like. Last month, I felt as though I was spiraling weekly. 
I'd convince myself that not receiving an A on one test would cost me my entire future. After living through weeks of trying a new organizational plan, only to land myself in the same spiral a week later, I believed I'd run out of options. With tears burning in my eyes, I thought to myself, no matter how hard I'm trying, it feels as though nothing is working. I laid in bed later that night and I realized I had not tried praying to God. I talked to God for the first time in over a year. I told him about my stresses, my worries, my strengths, my hopes, my fears, and everything in between. I asked for forgiveness and I asked for help. God helped me realize that regardless of an A or an F, I'm enough. Our God knows you and our God knows how to heal you. It's hard to turn away from the business of our everyday lives and it's hard to maintain our hope in the world. But even when it's difficult, God is waiting to hear your story and is always seeking ways to help you. We as a commission know that Libby's experience is similar to many others during this time of anxiety and new stressors. As a commission, we have dove into the meaning of loving your neighbor as yourself. We want to embody this golden rule by sharing our personal stories, revelations, hopes, joys, and challenges with one another. Perhaps one of the biggest challenges is this, becoming okay with not knowing. It feels like there is something outside of our control, making life that much harder. If only we could know exactly why that is. If only we could know how to fix it. Sadly, we don't. Isaiah 41.10 reminds us that God is always with and hoping to strengthen us. You can be reassured that you aren't struggling alone. God loves you with no conditions, with all your beautiful flaws and beautiful perfections. God is encouraging you every moment of every day. We are rooting for the young people and all the people of our diocese. We love you and are hoping your relationship with God grows. It has now been nine months since we have gathered as a diocesan youth community. People are tired. We are tired of gathering online. But as we see a drop off in connecting online, how can we, as diocesan youth leadership, remind this community of our purpose to include and love all people? Glad you asked. Leadership went back to the drawing board and came up with other ways to offer things without showing up to another Zoom. This includes social media special releases, like one minute devotionals every Monday, morning exercise videos, and youth led virtual choirs. Love your neighbor as yourself. The Youth Commission has also sent out care packages to youth across the diocese. Just last Sunday, we gathered as a small group to send out notes of love, new EYC Dio ATL face masks, and blank postcards for young people to share the love of Christ with someone through old-fashioned mail. Right now, there are hundreds of them in the mail with reminders of all this community represents, neighborliness. So here we are, afflicted but not crushed, perplexed but not despaired. We are certainly persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but never destroyed. We will continue to be the light of Christ. We will love our neighbor in, in, in every way we can. Our next online event is happening one day with a theme from the poem, Footprints in the Sand, in which we are reminded that no matter how far we may stray or how little our faith may be, that God is there to carry us through. Our hope is to remind the Dyson youth community to not be discouraged, but to remember that on the top of the mountain, God given feeling that regardless of when the next happening or Dyson youth event may occur, that we, as a family of believers bound by love, are here to support each other as neighbors. The first thing we talked about was the theme of our January retreat, Where is the Love? Which during this pandemic, with a lack of social connection, the upheaval for a fight for social justice, and so much more, made this question seem all too applicable to the year 2020. Yet continually, this commission has risen to the challenge to work through all the barriers to show love and to be the love of diocesan youth ministry. Arguably, the greatest commandment of all is to love your neighbor as yourself. And we as a commission are determined, no matter what the rest of this year may bring, to continue to seek and spread the all-inclusive and unconditional love of Jesus Christ to every youth of our diocese.